Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling here to welcome you on the Total Health Channel. Thank you for being with us again from day to day. And uh, let's ask God's blessing on our time together. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, life in the last days. And uh, every day is precious. Uh, give us uh, the best use of time. Help us to see things as you see them. And bless our witness and sharing with others. Thank you for this time together. Exceeding abundantly for Christ's sake. Amen. The Sabbath school lesson is about the least of these, and it's uh, from week to week, what can we do for the poor and the needy, you know. Uh, it's almost like the general conference is wanting more money for overseas than the poor and needy, when in reality they are uh, keeping far higher percentage of the money, the tithe given, than uh, years ago. Uh, they, they keep most of it. America has a wealthy, uh, you know, I was a student missionary to Colombia, Venezuela, and I was shocked that the missionary had a car in pieces trying to put together a motor for a vehicle so he wouldn't have to ride the public transportation where we catch fleas. Uh, and I uh, each night would take a bath and put a aftershave lotion on so the fleas wouldn't smell me and bite me all night. Uh, not a good situation and uh, yet we, we have uh, car subsidies and rent subsidies and mileage subsidies and educational subsidies and we got a big salary besides in the church. And uh, the executives of the Adventist health system, monstrous uh, wages, huge, I mean, uh, unconscionable, and um, yeah, not a good situation. We are rich, increased with goods, feel we have need of nothing as a result of that, and uh, yet Christ is outside knocking at the door of truth, okay? Uh, he represents truth. Today we're going to look at some truths from the Sabbath school lesson. The uh, What can we do for the poor? Uh, I bought a box of these books, uh, Steps to Christ, carry a, uh, a couple in my car. When I go to Phoenix, uh, almost every uh, place you jump off the interstate and stop at the stoplight, there is uh, some homeless guy wanting food and uh, food stamps. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, they probably wouldn't read the book, but if you give them a dollar or two, they might be interested uh, type of thing. I have to confess I haven't done that as faithfully as I wish or should. Uh, don't go to Phoenix often, once a month, really. But uh, that's just an idea that we uh, should make use of literature. Uh, in in uh, the last chapter of that book, Steps to Christ, it says, So send I you. In other words, Christ is sending us as his representative, and he always had something for everybody. So we should try to do that, I think. Um, now, uh, that's, that's a comment I plan to make in Sabbath school today, but I'm taking really four books, okay, <laughs> of, of my favorite author, Ellen White. I personally believe that she, uh, maybe next to Moses in the Old Testament and Paul in the New, was the greatest person uh, human in history uh, because she overcame so much uh, childhood injury, lack of uh, formal education beyond the third grade, um, but... Uh, she is the sole reason why Seventh-day Baptists have only 20,000 members in about 300 years of church history, and we have 20 million in about half the time, thanks to Ellen White, her counsels, her writings, her uh, suggestions to start schools, uh, publishing houses, health institutions. Uh, we are indebted, Adventists are, uh, up to their ears. Uh, we would not be where we are. and. We give the idea that uh, we follow her 100% when in her day uh, she was uh, uh, treated poorly, uh, asked to go to Australia to get rid of her, uh, agitating for truth, present truth. And I'm going to uh, share a thought with you, but first, uh, well, I'll, I'll share it first now. Christ's Object Lesson, page 127. She says, in every age there's a new development of truth, a message of God to the people of that generation. Uh, old truths are all essential. New truth is not independent of the old, but an unfolding of it. And then skipping a few lines, she says, He who rejects or neglects the new does not really possess the old. Uh, huge statement, and I think that's where most people are. Uh, that's why the, the prophets of old faced opposition. They came with the present truth for their day, the application that they needed, and most people, hey, we're not there, okay? It's kind of like the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath. Ellen White said in, in the 1880s they were as dry as the hills of Gilboa, focused on that. And they didn't see the righteousness by faith message that was uh, current at the time in 1888. So uh, not a good situation, but 
getting back to the lesson study and what I want to share, Ministry of Healing, page 183, a uh, classic statement that has more light and truth than I would say the whole quarterly. Okay, the quarterly doesn't miss, doesn't mention it, doesn't see it, uh, and yet it is the answer to the uh, I think God uh, for the homeless and the needy. <laughs> okay, this coming up, it's the chapter on the uh, unemployed and homeless in Ministry of Healing. And by the way, uh, Ellen White does say that that book contains the wisdom of the great physician. Wisdom of the great physician is not just physical health, it is mental health, social health, spiritual health. And I think if I was only one book that I could really uh, absorb and live and represent well, it would be that book because it has seven chapters on the life of Christ and his ministry and how he saves to serve, uh, we are saved to serve, and um, etc. Well, we overlook uh, a lot that's in it uh, on health, but also on the family, seven chapters on the family. And uh, I just think uh, we don't make enough of that book and ought to read it. And in the end time, we're going to need it, an understanding of it better for uh, the medical system is breaking down. Can't we see it now? Uh, the people uh, go to doctors uh, for uh, drugs and get uh, uh, an adverse drug reactions, which are now the leading cause of illness and death. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of people dying that way, and we just don't see it. Uh, you know, if, if 1% of the population is killed by these drugs, if you have one friend out of 100 that dies, you think, oh, well, he died, you know. You don't think of the cause, and you don't think of the millions now that are really dying because America has uh, about 300 million people in it, and 1% uh, of the population is huge uh, each month. It's a 9-11 daily, to be honest with you. We think, oh, 9-11 was huge, but uh, in numbers, it's, it's equivalent to two 9-11s daily dying from drugs that are properly prescribed according to uh, medical science. Right me medicine for the uh, right condition, not overdose, took the as, but died anyway. Adverse drug reaction, that's the definition. Properly prescribed and administered, but the person died or got sick. Well, back to uh, the uh, fact of Ministry of Healing and this chapter, though, on help for the unemployed and homeless. Uh, it says, in God's plan for Israel, every family had a home on the land with sufficient ground for tilling. Thus were provided both the means and the incentive for an industrious and self-supporting life. And no devising of man has ever improved upon that plan and owing to the world's departure from it is the wretchedness and misery that exists today in our cities. Uh, people come there for jobs, oh, maybe jobs, I don't know. They, uh, originally, man left the farm for the job, easy job, eight to ten, eight hours work uh, from eight to five or what. But today, it's poverty and wretchedness and uh, uh, food stamps and unemployment and disease and uh, see your doctor, go to the hospital. Uh, not good, basically, and uh, Adventists could have had, should have had the light, uh, but we moved into the cities as they did, as other people did, and today our work is largely concentrated in the city. We don't see that uh, everybody, if they had a place on the land, uh, would be an incentive to have food, and uh, that is the, the model that God had for the world. Uh, it was, you know, there was a lesson book in Eden, and they failed the lesson somehow, and now... Uh, uh, in the sweat of your brow, you earn bread, but we, we don't like that lesson book. We'd like a different one. And uh, so anyway, that's just, uh, I think, huge truth for homeless and unemployed today. Uh, the Pope is behind the, the moving of people from uh, South America north uh, uh, coming into our border. Uh, Daniel 1140 says the time of the end, the king of the north is overflowing the king of the south. We're the king of the south. America is like Egypt. Aborting the uh, 60 million babies uh, in Exodus 1, they killed the babies and uh, enslaved Israel. And most people are enslaved today. So we're going to repeat that history and uh, the Pope is behind it, bringing people here when uh, really uh, they would be, uh, you know, Catholic priests colonized uh, Latin America the same time that America was being formed. But now they all want to come for the prosperity that we have. Uh, thanks to Protestants that uh, formed this nation wisely and well with freedom of thought, not just ask the priest and what would he say, etc. Well, uh, okay, that's, that's uh, so far so good. Uh, you know, that's uh, 
where it's at, but uh, the present truth for our time is going a step beyond that. As we see the movement of populations, we should understand the scriptural context, which Ellen White identifies in her last book. <coughs> this is my mother's copy. I'm trying to find the title page. Um, the um, Captivity and Restoration of Israel, okay, is in the fine print. We you know it by prophets and kings, but it's as illustrated in the story of the captivity and restoration of Israel. So uh, how is that? What is that? That's her last message. But we got rid of her message by changing the title, and uh, oh, people overlooked uh, the message in the book, which is said basically in page 7, 13, and 14, what God purposed to do for the world through Israel, the chosen nation, he will finally accomplish through his church on earth today, even his covenant-keeping people. Okay, And to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to that ancient people. That's uh, page 713, 714. We don't even know what that means. But the new covenant promise has an overlooked context that she found. And that's what her title is about. It's Jeremiah 30, verse 3. Lo, the days come, saith the Lord, I'll bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, and cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. Verse 11 says, I am with you to save you, though I make a full end of all other nations. I will not make a full end of you. The point is, I don't want to be here when the full end is made. It's not going to be good. And God is going to gather us uh, in the next chapter. It says, I'll, get, I'll bring them from the north country, which was Babylon, gather them from the coast, the lame, the blind, the woman with child. A great company will return there, speaking of the land of the covenant. It says, your children will come again to their own border. They'll come from the land of the enemy in verse 16 and um, verse 17. We just, uh, that's, that's how we get the new covenant. We think, uh, oh, it's a great promise, but nobody has it at this point yet. Everyone today living can say like Paul, the good that I would, I do not, that which I would not, I do. Uh, he had a new covenant in his mind, but not in his heart. He had to wrestle with himself daily. I die daily, he said. And we're going to need to do some of that too. But God promises the new covenant experience for us in the end time. It's latter day. If you look at the last verse of Jeremiah 30 and the first verse of Jeremiah 31 where the new covenant is, it's a latter day context. So uh, we can be there, do that, uh, but uh, when we think of leaving this country for the Middle East, you know, where the, Israel didn't want to go to the Promised Land because there were giants, there are giant problems today, but have we learned anything? And yes, if we have, we can trust God, and I believe He will defend us, protect us, and it will be the only really safe place when the New World Order says, uh, you know, if you want to keep Saturday for Sabbath, uh, you better go to the Middle East where the Jews are because that's the only place in New World Order for Jews, okay? And it will be persecution and big trouble anywhere else. I promise you, that's the word of God. The New World Order is the uh, image beast of the UN, okay? When, when the U.S. lamb-like makes, make, makes an image, it's a look-alike to the Old World Order, New World Order, papacy, writing the, and guiding that government, world government of UN, that's why the Pope goes there, and that's the UN is obeying his uh, his words. Uh, you know, Rwanda is a good example of that. Persecution, genocide, nearly a million Protestants, many Adventists slain in Rwanda when genocide began, and the UN did nothing, absolutely nothing. Just the uh, why? Pope said, uh, "Let's stand down, and let the local government handle it." Local government was Catholic, so uh, big slaughter. And it's coming again to uh, a church near you sometime, if your name is on it. Uh, I would say we're facing serious times. And uh, listen to these messages. There's more coming. But thank you very much. God bless you. And uh, see you uh, again.